We begin the current daf in the condition daf pe aleph. We begin the penultimate daf in the sechtes condition, and the end of seder nashim, and the first half of shas, where the gemara continues qualifying the halacha that we mentioned in the previous mishnah regarding the halacha of yichud, regarding what is the prohibition about being secluded a uh, man with a woman. Shiras kolas bas v'kazach and the cheskel turn to the bechaim. Shiras of joining today's daf should be a schos v'achin b'nei yisrael, b'nei yisrael, and throughout the entire world. Some discuss in today's daf are a continuation of the halachas of Yisro Yichud, like we said, uh, the heter of Baila Be'ir. <clears throat> if her husband is in town, in Cheshem Shem Yichud, they were not concerned about if another man is secluded with this woman. The other famous heter of Pesach Pesur Gelash if the door to the street is open, again, obviously there's in halacha, obviously much discussion what does open mean, but in Cheshem Shem Yichud, they were not concerned for Yichud. The Gemara discusses the case of Anoshem Mibachutz Anoshem Mibachnim. What happens if there's a a, a, a room where men are sleeping and women are sleeping, and men on the outside, women on the inside, or the other way around, would we be concerned for Yichud or not? A person could be secluded with two Yavamas, meaning <clears throat> they're married to two different brothers. He could be secluded with those two women, because as we'll quote, a whole bunch of women that don't like each other, and we're not concerned that they're going to be mezanah together with the same men. A person could be secluded with his mother and his daughter, even though they're Arias, but there's no concern <clears throat> that, that we would have. Higdiloi, when they get older, we said then the children with the opposite gender of the parent, they have to be sleeping in their own uh, garments. So we begin the current daf, daf pe aleph, top line of the Amid, <clears throat> where the Gemara <clears throat> says the following qualification. It's really just finishing up what we said in the previous daf, but it's another qualification. It says, we didn't learn that we said that a woman could be secluded with two men so on on the previous stuff we had a teaching that said that it's only by kshayrim not by prutzim it has to be upstanding people not people that are uh, breached in the laws or in the area of modesty and another qualification of this that a woman could be secluded with two men is only elabir only in the city of bededech but on the road then there has to be three men why Maybe one of them is going to have to urinate. He's going to have to do his bodily needs. He's going to have to distance himself to be discreet. If it's only one woman with two men, the other one is away now for a few minutes, and then this woman is alone with this man, violating the Isser of Yichud. Therefore, on the road, you have to have three, not just two. As the Gemara, as it tried to do in the previous qualification, let's support it from the Mishnah the site. We quoted on the previous Dav that the Mishnah says over there, the man who did kinu, warned his wife, she, she did yichud, she secluded herself, which was the stira, and now he's taking her up to the base of Migdash. So his local court is moisim leshnei tim in the They send along two Tamaric scholars. Why? Shem because he might have intimacy with her on the road, which would disqualify the whole may site, the, the site, the drinking process. So they send along two Tamaric scholars. Wait a second. Chirei ve'ihu, two and the man, but is three. Oh, you see that on the road, you have to have three individuals, because again, here the husband is not a regular Bible, but her, her husband is also forbidden to her. So it's like three people that are forbidden, but you see you have to have three, because or else just send one more. Why send along two more? Obviously, because on the road, when they're traveling, you have to have three, because when one goes away, you'll still have two. So if you want to know, it's not a proof, just like we said, the previous qualification not a proof. The reason why he's sending along two people is that you could have witnesses to testify if he was intimate with her, to testify in front of Bezdin that they don't erase the scroll with God's name for this husband. Because he's going to say, I want to check her out. I, I suspect, but it's too late. And how do we know? He's like, no, I didn't. No, we have two witnesses. And therefore, that's the reason, not necessarily proving the halacha, that for Yichud Bederech, you have to have three people. I think remembering the story related to this teaching that, uh, that will relate back. Rav Rav Yehuda, they were both going on the road. So they're walking on the road, there's two Tamit Chacham, and there's a woman walking in front of them. Lift up your leg, meaning let's get Shnel Lamagain, quickly let's go that we get in front of her. Make me Gehenim, get in front of Gehenim. Meaning to say, there's an Erev over here. So Amalei said to him, but Bamarhu the Amar, which is this teaching we just said, you the master said, we just quoted Rabbi Huda said the name of Rav. That, that that was from the previous stuff that you said that if you have two people in town 
They were not concerned for any inappropriateness with an erva, with two upstanding people. So we're Ksherim. So why concern for us with this woman? So Malay said to him, Me, Amy, the big shame could go in another out. You think we said by upstanding people like me and you? <laughs> no, El Kagun Mai. So, so then what, so what type of people? Kagun the Chanina bar Papi, Bechavedov, and Reb Tzadik and Reb Kahana, it's brought in the first parak on Daf Memem and Elf. They're people of upstanding uh, stature. They would have uh, uh, the, uh, inappropriate situations and they were able to, you know, save themselves, throw themselves in the fire. Those are people that. That could be alone with a woman. <laughs> Me and you, we're, we're not considered on that category. Now the Gemara continues now uh, uh, in these halachas. I'm a rap. So Malkin al Yichud. The halacha is that if someone excludes himself with a woman, so we give him rabbinic lashes. The ain't oisrin, but uh, we don't make the woman forbidden on her husband al hayichud because she was secluded with a man uh, in, in the, the private area. Amr Vashi, he says, Loiman, we didn't say that you give lashes, it'll be yichud penuya. Only when a single girl, a single woman was secluded. Yichud ishes ish, but if a married woman was secluded with another man, Loi, we're not going to give lashes. Why not? It's rabbinic, as we want to, we want to punish the people who are violating this halacha. No. We have a different counter concern. We don't want to spread rumors about her children. They're going to say, oh, <laughs> Why do you think the court is giving her malchus? They saw she was mezana. Because currently we don't have capital punishment. So what do the courts have but to give her lashes? Oh, so she was mezana. So these kids are going to be uh, suspected that they're mamzerim. And people are not going to want to marry them. It's going to cause disruption for them. So therefore not to spread rumors about their children. They're not going to give lashes to a married woman that was violent. Yichab. But a single girl doesn't have children. So we don't have a concern about giving her lashes. However, the... <clears throat> her. Oh, you want to know with the woman, with the man also? Yeah, that's a good question. Why? What do you mean? Maybe he wants to do kiddushin. So why is why is it different, her or her or him? Are you saying to me that if God does kiddushin with me, it's outside the system of? It sounds like you would give lashes to both. It's just that when it's a married woman. That we have suspicion regarding, we're going to suspect her children. So you wonder what him, but him, it has nothing to do with his children. It's about his wife. So it's always right. So so that's what we're discussing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, clear you, yeah, clear shouldn't be any different. So uh, the Gemara, however, brings that um, Marzutra he actually would be Malki. That um, he would give lashes even for a married woman that was secluded with another man, but a machris make an announcement on her. She was not mezana, she but she she was secluded with another man, and therefore we're giving her lashes. Says Mar Nami Your whole reason why you said that you don't give lashes a married woman is because people are going to make suspicion regarding the children. So why don't you do what 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 Mar, what uh, Marzutra did? Give lashes and make an announcement. So Malay says, no, those are going to hear this and not going to hear that. You know, the, the Rav gives a drush, he says one thing, that, that they hear about. The other part, they they don't hear that. So it's not going to help. They're going to hear that you got lashes. They're not going to hear the part about uh, that she was uh, only meyached, not mezan. You heard, you heard, you heard. So therefore, he says, it's not worth it to, to do that option. I'm a Rav, a related idea about giving lashes, uh, about being inappropriate, is Malkin Aloitoiba Hashmur. We give lashes for the one who there's rumors going about him that he violates sins. We give him lashes because not having a good reputation in a way or having bad reports being said about you is a negative prohibition. Shemaka says a Pasuk in Shmuel Aleph. When it was talking about the sons of Eli, it says, Al Bonai. No, my sons, meaning like Al is a negative, is a love, is a negative prohibition. Because the words I'm hearing are not good. That that's a Al, that's a negative prohibition. Therefore, we give lashes for, for bad reports. Mazutra, Moisibullah, what he would do, Mazutra would put on Afsega, a halter, like a, some type of way, a saddle that you put on the animal, Al Kasve, on the shoulder of that person. And he would recite 
he would say in front of him, Al Banai, no, my son, meaning to let him know that it was for this negative prohibition that he's giving him lashes. So he would say the Pasig of Al Banai, when they gave him Malkus. Amar Abba, now going back to the halachas of Yichud, several halachas that pertain to the Yisab Yichud, he says, Ba'alo Be'ir, well known pater uh, that permits a, 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 a plumber to come into the into the house and uh, do some work, and the woman, the housewife, is alone. How could they be there alone in the home? Ba'alo Be'ir, the husband's in town. We're not concerned for Yichud, so Rashi actually, um, which is controversial in a way, says Lahalkis. He talks about not necessarily, uh, he, it might be Aser. Rashi says that we, we're not going to be concerned for Yichud to give lashes, but Al Kapanim, um, the, the reason why there's no concern about Yichud is because she's afraid of the husband. This is the way Rashi says it. Is that Hashta Asi? Is that um, because now he's coming? So, um, I mean, that's the place to discuss is regarding, it sounds like from Rashi that there is an Isser. And um, and and Tosi says that no, English and Klamashim Yichi Tosi brings a kasha, whatever. It says no, and there's not even an iser. Like the way Rashi says it is because she's afraid of the husband. He's going to come now. That's the that's the dread that the woman has. So therefore, we're not concerned she's going to be mezana, and therefore it's not a problem. Another famous hatter, Amar Yosef, he says that Pesach Pesuach L'Shus Aram. Again, like we said, it depends. Does it mean unlock? Does it mean the door open? But be that as it may. When the door is open to a public area, there's also no concern of Yichud because, again, people are afraid that someone's going to enter and, and therefore uh, there's no concern that the people would be Mazana. Now, the Gemara brings a story related to this that Rabbi Bibi went to the house of Rabbi Yisif. The boss of the Karacharifta, after they ate the meal, so they had eaten in the, in the loft, in the upper story, in the second floor. Then Rav Yisif and his wife came down, and Rabibi remained upstairs in the loft. So he said to them, Shkulu darga mituse bivi. Take the ladder away from beneath bivi, meaning the way you were able to come down from the loft, so that I shouldn't come down and be secluded with the wife of Rav Yisif. Because Rav Yisif said, oh, I have a share to give, whatever this and that. And Rav Bibi's alone in the house, and uh, I don't want to be able to have access. So take away the, the ladder. And that says the Gemara, but Rabbi said, the husband's in town. So what's the problem? So he goes to give his shear. So he says, around. He comes running back. I forgot my shit. He says, hey, what's going on over here? Right? So I'm saying, so, 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 so why do you have to take away the ladder? So this is also a very important halacha for the halacha. So the Chandra Bibi, Bibi is different. He was his, you know, BFF, so to speak, of Rav Yasef. His best friend, whatever, very close, and begaisebe. Uh, he's very friendly with them. So, Aishas Rav Yisiv is oh, how it's doing, how's everything, how's your job, this and that. So, when it comes to very friendly, you know the halacha of gospa that that's very different, and you don't have a lot of these heterim, as the Gemara is telling us regarding bala beir. That's not going to help it for us because they're very friendly. Very friendly. She's not concerned about, not afraid of the husband. What are you doing? Guys are schmoozing over here. And therefore, the, he said, take away the ladder. Another halacha, Amrav Kahana, he says, Anosha mi bachutz. Let's say you have a, a dormitory, whatever it is, and there's a Shabbaton, and you have, a, a, you have the, the, men, the boys are sleeping on the outside in the outer room. Anosha mi bachnim, and the girls are sleeping in the inner room. Says Rav Kahana, En chayshim shum yichu, we're not concerned for the prohibition about seclusion, meaning the ones in the outer room they don't have any access to the inner room because what are you coming in for? There's, you know, if somebody comes into an apartment, there's a room, and then you have a room in the further end. So how could one man be secluded with the women? You have no access. You have no, there's no reason for him to come in over there. But the ones on the inside, they have access because they have to go out through the outer room. So therefore, if you have um, a noshim mibifnim, if the men, if the boys are sleeping in the inner room, let's say the men are on the inside, but Nashim Bibachutz, and the girls are on the outside, then Khaishim Shim Yichud. Then we are concerned for him for Yichud because we're concerned that maybe one of them are going to come out and is going to be secluded with women. Like we said, that uh, even a man with t- uh, two women is problematic. So this boy who comes out in the middle of the night because he has to you know, go to the bathroom, or whatever, 
So uh, he's going to come out, and all these girls are here, these ten, group of ten girls is coming out because he has access. Inside, what are you coming in over here? So therefore, the, the concern of Yichud would be if the boys are on the inside and the girls on the outside. But if the girls are on the inside, the boys on the outside, that wouldn't be a concern. However, the Gemara actually tells us, the Brisa says the exact opposite. If the men are on the outside and the women are in the inside, we're concerned that maybe the men, one of the men are going to come into the inner room and none of his friends are going to realize because he just slipped into the inner room. We don't, they don't know where he went. Maybe he went out to get a drink somewhere, whatever. Now, if the, men are, if the boys are on the inside and the girls are on the outside, then we're not concerned that maybe, let's say, one of the girls are going to slip inside to the room inside because even if she would come in, it wouldn't bother us because a woman could be secluded with two men. So that wouldn't be a problem. And if one of the men would just slip out from the inside room to go outside with the, where the girls are, that's not Yichud because he's afraid that one of the other boys who also has to come out, maybe use the bathroom, get a drink from downstairs in the lobby, just that, might come out after him because people from the inside come out to the outer room. So, so therefore, that actually would not be the concern. So the Bryce says the exact opposite. So the concern is when the, uh, when the boys are, are in the outside and the, and the girls are, are in the inside, then there is a concern for Yichud. But when the men are in the inside and the girls are on the outside, then we're not chesh with the yichud. Exact, exact opposite. So Amar Baya, Baya says, okay, Hashem Dom Rav Kahana, Hachi, Rav Kahana's version has it one way. But Tana Masnit Ibchen, the bride says the exact opposite. Anon, Ana, that's the gears that we have, Ana, or some have the gears, Anan. Obviously, very important. Is Abai saying it on himself or is it all of us? No, but the Chumrah will do stringently, as the halacha is, that we are machmer by both cases, because each one has a svara why you would be concerned for the Prahmat Yichud either way. Now, the Gemara tells us, interesting, what the Amiram would do to be concerned about the mingling of men and women. So Abaya, when there was a place of gathering of men and women, whether it be for a drasha, or whether it be by a chuppah, so Doyer Gufe, he would organize the uh, earthenware like jugs. He would put many of them between the men and the women, so that if one of them wants to come to the other one, it's going to knock and it's going to make a noise. So like to make like this alarm, like that the men shouldn't be mingling with the women. And Rava, Doyer, like the term of like making rows, he would make rows of kana, of reeds, that when you pass them, they make noise. So it would be like this alarm that like, you know, the, the, you know, the, the, the rep is there and he sees that someone is, is crossing over from the girls to the boys, the boys to the girls. And therefore, yeah, yeah, Rashi says, yeah, that it's, uh, that it's more like, um, yeah, why, why, I guess the way Rashi probably is because why did he dafka use these things? I wanted to make a mechitza, just put up like a wall. It sounds like here that he made these things that like, um, just to, to that he should know they're coming to each other, that it should be like uh, an alarm that's, that's being set off. Amr Oven, Oven says, it's very negaya for what we just had now. Sakfa uh, deshata. He says the the most vulnerable time of the year for for men and women to be secluded and to sin is rigla. Is actually the the days of the yom tovim of the holidays, where men and women gather to hear the drasha and they start schmoozing and having conversations. So Taisus brings that some say that's why they have the minig to fast after Pesach after Sukkot, what we know called Bahab. Monday, Thursday, Monday, and they fast because Nochayamtiv, there's a lot of people who are all dressed up and they're having a good time. And those are times that are vulnerable times for, for sinning in areas of Arias. That's why we have Bahab after Yom Tevim. Mm-hmm. What? Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, because it's not, not so much time, really. I don't, you know, I'm saying Chalamoid uh, and this net, you know. Um, yeah, but it's yeah, a good, a good shayla. Um, but, uh, but definitely it's not so much time there. So now the Gemara continues on this theme about the Yetzirah for Arias, which is obviously the theme of the Isser of Yichud. Even though we know once there's an Isser, it could be a, technically a 90-year-old woman, and uh, not, nothing against 90-year-old women, but I'm saying for an 18-year-old guy, right? But, but the point is, once it's us, it's us. But the theme, obviously, of Yichud, obviously, is that it's going to lead to... Um, 
to intimacy and, and to understand the power of the Yitzhahara for Arias. So the Gemara brings Hanach Shvuyasa. They were these captive women that saw in Narda, that came to Narda, and they were redeemed, and may all captives be redeemed speedily uh, amongst the Jewish people. And Askinu Lebei Rav Am Chasida. So Rav Am, the pious one, commanded that they should be redeemed. And, and where you have a whole group of these captive women, we're going to put them. So he put them in his loft, in his upper story. He had a, a chesed house, and he put them up there to stay. Now, being obviously the very pious person, he took away the ladder from in front of them, that none of the women should be coming down. He understands, you have to make a darim, that uh, you know, something shouldn't happen. Now, but one of the women was passing by there's a skylight from the first floor. That's how you put a ladder and you get to the loft. So, uh, from the, so when one of them was passing by that opening, so it illuminated the house from the upper story because her face was shining. Obviously a very beautiful, radiant woman. So you have to hear this. It's incredible, these Gemaras. Uh, very humbling for all of us. Shakli Rav Amla Darga. Rav Amram took the ladder Ten people couldn't move this ladder. He moved it himself. The adrenaline that a person gets from uh, this like, like cocaine rush that you get from, from, from Arias. So he started uh, climbing up the ladder to, to uh, petition her to, to be intimate. Now, there's obviously all the skills of riding the waves and all these uh, uh, the distress tolerance skills about what to do when a person's in a uh, overwhelming urge uh, for any type of, um, whether it be an addiction or any type of uh, uh, extreme extenuating circumstances. So the Gemara tells you certain things, like when they got to halfway up the ladder, so this is very important behaviorally, um, that he widened his, his legs to like position himself strongly in his spot to overpower his inclination. And Ramakala, he started screaming out, Nur be Amram. There's a fire in the house of Amram. So he wanted, he screamed that the whole neighborhood should gather and to come, that they should put out the fire so that he should refrain from his inclination that he should be embarrassed from them. A fire, a fire, they, give, they scream, they come, start coming. So So the rabbis came, they thought that there was a fire. They came, all came running with their, they put their kapata half on, they were flying in, the pay is flying with. And Amrile, they said to him, Kiss a fist, you embarrassed us. What's going on over here? Amalahu, he said to them, Mutav, Tichasu, Be Amram, Be Amodain. Better that there be shame in the house of Amram in this world. And that you don't have shame from him in the world to come. Better that I, yeah, embarrassing, degrading. What is this? He's going to these groups to like overcome his problems and yeah, and he comes in there. Yeah, yeah. Better that I be degraded in this world and not be degraded in the next world. Now the story continues. Ashbe, so Rav Amram went and uh, swore to his in- evil inclination. The impig mine that he should leave from him. So nothing mine kemude de nuder. So the Yitzhahara for our eyes came out from him like a pillar of fire. That's how strong it is, this, this desire for uh, or illogical that a person becomes for the taivas nashim. Somebody said to him, Chazi da'at nuder, look, you're fire, but not bisra, and I'm just flesh. But not different and I'm better than you. I was able to overcome you. Now the Gemara continues and shows us that this is not an easy feat. Their mayor have misled since Bo'ebri Avera. He used to mock those who committed sin. Now generally in the Gemara when it says Avera, it refers to the Avera of Arais, of uh, pornography or one of these things that are, and he used to say, come on, it's so easy to, o- to overcome your inclination. I love the words Rashi says, Im ha'yuraitzim, oh, classic words that, you know, all the family members say, oh, if he just wanted, if they want, if she wanted, they could do it. Don't give me a break, right? Do they see what they're doing? So this is what the Gemara tells us, Rashi says, Ramey used to laugh at that, say, oh, no, look at these guys. 
Prostak. Ah, this, right? Yoy Mechad, be careful. Yoy Mechad, the Damele Satan. One day, the Satan, who's the Yitzhahara, appeared to the great Tan Remek. It's like a woman. Bahach Gisa de Nahara. On the other side of the river. Loy Hava Mavra. Now, there was no boats to cross over the river. Nokat Mitzra. So there was a rope that stretched out from one edge of the river to the other edge. The great Tana grabbed the hold of the rope to go on this like narrow board that's along the width of the river. And he's passing over the river, holding on to this like ropes course to get to the woman on the other side of the river. Kimata Palga Metzra, when he got to halfway through that, that plank, Shavke, the Yitzhahara, let go of her mayor. And Omar, he said, if they weren't making announcements in Shemayim, he zorbed to be killed for a mayor in this Torah, I would make your blood worth tartimoy, two more, like, like nothing, like pennies. I would have made a mockery out of you. Where you would have been mezano with me, you know what I'm saying? Don't, don't, don't think for a second that, that we could overpower the Yetzar, a famous Gemara in Kedushin, like we had previously in this Mesechta. If God doesn't help, you can't. Now we know that why they say he's our neighbor to us. magno matzla. You learn Tyra, you learn the Dafayim, you learn Tyra, it protects and it saves. And and Rebbe would have stumbled, he would have done this, he would have committed this sin, but because of his Tyra, the Yitzhara had to stop. A similar story of Kiva, have mislated by Rebbe. He also used to laugh at those who would who would sin, say, come on, you know, say, if they really wanted to, these guys didn't have to do this and didn't have to do that. One day, one day, the Sutton appeared to him like a woman on the top of a tree. So he grabbed a hold of the tree because so like and he's climbing the tree. This you have to understand. They get an image over here, right? A grace of bard over here with his like, and he's, he's climbing the tree. When he gets halfway up the tree, Shavke, the Yitzhar lets go of him. Omar, he said, he loved the Machers, if they weren't announcing in the firmaments, he zobed the Bekiv, he zobed the Bekiv, he zobed the Bekiv, Shavis le Domach Tartimai, would have made your blood worth two ma. So again, that does teach us a case of humility, never to mock anyone that's, that's going through such a situation, because it's something that is a mighty struggle. But the Gemara continues and tells us another story. Playmoy was the name of a person. He used to say every single day, Gida be'ini de sat. Arrows in the eyes of the Satan. Meaning to say, I'm going to take you down, Satan. You, you won't overcome me. I know who the Rebbein Shlava, Muna, Betach, and Av Yerushamai. I learned over there, Musa, every day, uh, arrows in your eyes. Now, Yem Echad, one day, Malu Yom de Kippur Havei. It was Arab Yom Kippur. The day before Yom Kippur, Yidam Ali Ka'anya. So the Satan appears to him like a poor person. Asa Karabava comes knocking on the door. Afikali Rifta, he brings him out a, a, a piece of bread. Amalei um, said to him, come on, Yomiki, in a day like today, everyone's inside, we know you eat the Sudus, Erevim Kippur, Me'es, but no, we're hungry on the outside. Okay, I lay. He brought him in, and he gave him the bread to eat. Amalei um, said to him, okay, but Yomiki, in such a day, everyone's eating on the, by the table, I'm going to put myself over here in the kitchen, or over here, and whatever. Okay, I see you, I see you, Ataka. So he brought him in, and he sat him by the table. Have a now the 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 satan is sitting over there. Mili Navshe Shikhana Vikive Ale. He was he he had these boils and blisters that had all those secretions coming out, really disgusting. And again, it also teaches us a, a, a moral lesson that these are people in your life, you don't know who's what. I'm not here translating the metaphor of, of what's going on, but this might be your Sutton, this might be your Elian Navi. This guy is there with bandages, this is all the blisters. There. And this was his the Sutton. And he's doing all these disgusting things. So Malay says to him as we continue to Mid-Bays, Tiv Shaper, stop it. Sit appropriately. Don't don't do these disgusting things by the table. So Amalei says to him, Havali Kasa. Give me a cup, do me a favor, pour me a cup. Of wine. So Yavali Kasa gave him a cup. Ichmar, he coughed and shod the bekichai, and he spit inside of it his phlegm that comes out from like the lungs, those heavy, <coughs> those real smoke and coughs, like spits it in. And Nachurubei, so 
he got upset at him uh, at Playmoy. Shaka umis. So so this this poor person, he like he 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 held him like he he, he like shook and and he died, like, he like collapsed. So they heard that they were saying, in other words, the family members heard like noise coming from the outside saying, play my kotl gavra, play my kotl gavra, play my kill the man, play my kill the man. You know, quickly, suddenly you go from being this big host to being this big hotshot and suddenly they're prosecuting you. It doesn't take so much to be a president or uh, whatever. And then suddenly you're being prosecuted. So Arak, so play me ran away thinking that the, the, the officers of the king are coming to kill him. And he went and he hid himself in the bathroom outside, out of town. Okay. Also Basre. So the Sutton comes after him. And Nafal Kameh, he falls in front of him. When, 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 the, when the Sutton sees by Playmoy that he was in pain, so he revealed who he really is. Amalei said to him, My time Amr Hachi, why did you always curse me? Saying, Girobain the Satan, arrows in your eyes, Satan. It's very sensitive, this Satan. So it says, So what do you mean? how should I say? In other words, to push you away from me that I shouldn't sin. I, I needed to say something to, to you know, get my daily dose of, 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 of motivation, you know, to say, I'm going to fight you and we're going to be soldiers. The whole world's looking at you and we're going to conquer and we're going to kill. You're, you're Hamas. You're, what, what am I supposed to say? Somebody says, No. The master should say, Rahmana Hashem should provoke in you the Satan, but you shouldn't say that about me, which is a way an important lesson. The person has to understand his dark side. Maybe there is some value in understanding your Satan, but Hashem should alchemize it however it is, but the Satan was telling him, you shouldn't be saying that and trying to provoke me, your Satan. So too, the Gemara brings Ashi he was accustomed that whenever he would do what's called Nefila Sapayim, we call it Tachnun, Maybe he would fall on his face. He would say, The merciful one, Hashem, should save us from the evil inclination. It's a very fascinating story. One day, his wife overhears him saying this tefillah when he says, She says, Let's see. This is already many years, many years. That he already removed himself from me because he's old. And we haven't been intimate for many years. What's he afraid of the Yitzhah? Oh, this guy, this guy's this alta yidl, whatever. He's like, you know, they don't even know what it means, you know, the virility. You know what I'm saying? Well, what's he all afraid of? What's the Yitzhah Huda showing that he's already afraid? Asah Yitzhah Huda. So, my time will come, why is he saying this? So, the Gemara tells us, Yemechad, one day, have a Kogoris begin say. So, he's learning in the garden, you know, all these pictures of the Gedayim, they have their table out there in the garden. He's learning out in the Guten. Koshta Nafsha. She gets all dressed up. With all jewelry and all her perfumes, and she really gets, uh, you know, to dress to the to the nines. A chalfa v'tanya kame. She she keeps on passing by in front of him, once and twice. So the tzaddik picks up his eyes. Amalei says to her, "Manat Raymond Bista." He doesn't recognize his wife when he always wears that the, the, the house coat or whatever this and that. And like suddenly, you know, she's all dressed up. So Amra, she says, "Anocharusa." Which is, was the name of a well known Zaina in town. Well known prostitute says, I am Harusa. The Hadri Miyama, that today I came back from traveling the world. I, I, today I just came back. Okay. Tava, he propositioned her. So Amalei, she said to him, Okay, but I see Nahali, first you have to bring me Lahach Rumana, there's a pomegranate, the Reish Tsutsiso, that there is a small branch on the top of the tree. If you bring me that pomegranate, then I'll, we'll be together. So Shava, he jumped, and Azul asked Hala, and he went and he brought it to her. That's the story. He asked the base when he comes back home, have a kashagra the base to Tanura. His wife was warming up the oven, making making nachmal, who knows what she's making, whatever, warming up the house. Salik Vakuyasabikave. Her husband comes in and he goes and he sits inside. The oven, the furnace that she's middle heating up to kill himself. Amalei, she says, in my house, what's going on? Why are you sitting in the oven? So Amalei said to her, hachi hachi masa. He admitted, at least he was truthful. He says, what happened today? This is what happened. So Amalei, she said to him, 
don't worry, I'm not Havoy. It was actually me. So Ashkech, but he didn't pay attention to her. He thought maybe his wife feels bad. She doesn't want to lose her husband, whatever. He knows it was the designer that he was with. And the Havale Simoni, she gave him signs to let her let him know. I was me. I could tell you everything that happened. Amalai said to her, But I, however, had in mind to violate something. I didn't know. I thought you were a Zaina. So all the days of the righteous person, he was fasting. At Shemes Boy Samis, that he actually died in that death because of the sin that he thought he was doing, even though he didn't do it, which the Gemara brings to Tanya. They learn the Bryce of this concept. A Pasuk of Midbar says, We know the Allah when a woman makes a nether, so her husband has the ability to do what's called Hafaras Nadar. He can nullify, he has the right to veto her nether. So the Pasuk says, Isha Hafedam, her husband is going to nullify it. Vashem Yislachla. And Hashem is going to pardon her. Now, what it sounds like from the Pasuk is that even though her husband already did hafara, Hashem still has to pardon her, has to give her slicha. Now, the question is, what's the Pasuk talking about? If her husband did hafara, so what did she violate that Hashem has to pardon her? Says the Gemara, We're talking about a woman who took a vow of Nazirus. Her husband heard and he nullified it. But he nullified it. She didn't know that her husband nullified her vow. And she went out to the bar that night. And even if she has like she, people that are very quick and impulsive are quick to make the nether. And they're also quick to impulsively violate that nether. So that night she feels terrible at herself. And she's like, okay, I'm going to, we're going to drink tonight. And she goes to the cemetery. Oh, so even though it's really permitted, because the husband was made for it, but since she was intending to violate an Isser, because she thought it was Aser, she needs to have Slicha for that itself. And that's exactly what happened with the story, where he thought he was doing something wrong, and therefore he fasted for the rest of his life. Now, Rebbe Kiva, when he, come, when he would come to this pasuk of Isha HaFeiram, Hashem Yisrael, he would cry. Why would he cry? He said, Rabbi Yisrael, if someone is just intending to eat something not kosher, meaning he wants, he thought he's eating chaza, bacon. Turns out it's actually kosher, glad kosher meat that he's like, um, you want a kosher meal? No, I don't want a kosher meal. No, nope. give me the bacon. And he gets it. And he turns out he inclines packaging, whatever. Afterwards, he sees that it's giving kosher, glad kosher the flesh. Amr, the Torah says he has to have atonement, he has to have pardoning. So someone that intends to eat uh, swine meat. And they eat swine meat. All the more so how much kapara the person can have to need for not only having the kavana, but actually also being metam to himself by doing the iser. Okay, it's about the similarly you say a pasik in the yigra. It says, um, when it comes to the asham tali, it says if someone below yada he didn't know, the asham he's guilty, but not savan he has to carry a sin. So sounds like like a Rabbi Chaim Shmulevitz type. You know, you get very uh, emotional. Rabbi Kiba would come to this pasuk. He would cry. If someone that's intending to eat kosher fat, he didn't realize. He didn't know he was doing anything wrong. He only finds out later that maybe he. It turns out that he had fats. He didn't know Bashem. He's guilty. But not someone who carries his sin. So someone intends to eat forbidden fats. And for all of the other and he eats for benefits, fat, Allah has come and become all the more so how much atonement the present in the need. Now, Isi ben Yehuda, I mean, he says, it says in the passage below Yad that he didn't know that Ashman is guilty, but not so when he has to carry his sin. Al davar ze yudavu kol hadayvim. On this thing, a person has to be sorrowful on this, where a person did not intend, and there is still the carrying of the sin, which can mean different things, but I'll upon them when a person definitely doesn't uh, doesn't doesn't he thinks he didn't do anything wrong, I didn't intend. No, a person has to go ahead and be sorrowful of heart anyway uh, for that type of situation. And the Mishnah said, going back to Allah of the Mishnah, uh, He said that a person could be secluded with his mother, even though his mother is Arab, you could be secluded with her. He says uh, similarly. Said, a person can be secluded with his sister, which 
the well-known words of Rashi in Halacha, which is much discussed, could a brother and a sister share an apartment together? Rashi says, leprokim, at times. Meaning, he says, clearly, you cannot live with our constantly in the same apartment, but <clears throat> temporarily, 30 days, whatever this discussion in the place, what that is, but if you're going, your sister lives out in the West Coast, and you're going to visit her, and you're staying in the apartment, just make mateen, you could be secluded with her. And that's why you'll see the difference in the words. That's where Rashi is really coming from. The word by his sister says mesyachid. But when it talks about the other part, it says vidar im ima vimbitai. A person can live with his mother and his daughter. It doesn't just say mesyachid. That's where you see the discrepancy between the sister and between the parent or a child. Where a person does not have a strong yetzer for his mother or his daughter because that was already actually accomplished by the Ashkenaz Agdaila that a person should not be incited for incest um, or other types of close relationships that will actually, that we see actually different. But Akapana, the mother and the daughter, that when they poked out the eye, one eye of the Yitzhahara, the Gemara says in Sanedrin, and made a person that, the Gemara in Sanedrin, the Anshu that they, 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 they didn't know what to do with this Yitzhahara, because it used to be that person would have Tibus even for his relatives also, his mother and his daughter and everything. But the the Anshikina Sekdela went and poked out his eye, and now a person at least is not so incited for his mother or his daughter. Therefore, a person can live with his daughter or his mother. Now, Kiyamr Kamei de Shmuel, when Rabbi Huda said this teaching over in, in front of Shmuel, Ami said, What do you mean? You're not allowed to be secluded with any erva in the Torah, even with an animal. So you have your little pet animal, you can't be secluded even with your animal. So the Gemara says, how could you say that? So now we're in the Mishnah, the Mimim of Imbita, a person could be secluded with his mother and with his daughter. You could even sleep with them, skin to skin, at least when you're a younger age. So a trip to the Shmuel, that definitely refutes Shmuel. Shmuel, Shmuel will tell you, what do you mean? According to your reasoning, what do you do with the following Brisa? It says, a chaisai, person's sister, a chamaisai, and his mother-in-law, and all other arayas, forbidden relationships in the Torah, you cannot be secluded with them, you can't stay alone with them in, the, in an apartment, in the room, whatever, only if there's witnesses, but it sounds like be'edim in, with witnesses, yes, without witnesses, not, meaning, it sounds like all arayas, mother, daughter, sister, sounds like everyone. So, so, so we have proofs either way. So the Gensal, that says, you're right, it's a machlikish tanoyim, regarding, one's own mother, daughter, all these types, are they forbidden or not? The time like Lunda Braisa. Amr Meir says, he's Zorbi, he says, be careful about me, because of my daughter. Meaning, he didn't want to be secluded with his own daughter. Amr Abtavan, Abtavan said to the family members of his family, says, he's Zorbi, be careful regarding me with my daughter-in-law, and they kalasi that I shouldn't be secluded with my daughter-in-law if something could happen. Very often, you know, the young couple comes and the wife goes out and then the son's out and by davening and then the shver is alone with the shneer. So be careful that I'm not going to be alone with my daughter-in-law. <laughs> so lig lig of Isa Talmud, there was a certain student of Reb that, that laughed at him. Come on, don't be such a, you know, as a chumrinik, this is, you know, the second you jump out the window, the second that your son walked out, you know, because you're alone with your daughter-in-law. So I'm a rebavo, Meshachim it wasn't a few days, didn't take long, until that student stumbled with his own mother-in-law, which oftentimes that's why probably he was laughing in the first place, because he had that underlying characteristic, which oftentimes it's actually what we mock other people about things that we have our own insecurities about. But Akaban, that own student went and sinned with his mother-in-law. Now, Shmuel said, I feel in behema, even with an animal, your pet, whatever it is that you have, you cannot be secluded. So the Gemara tells us how far Amaram went with this. Abaya, machlale mekula dabra. When he would be walking in the fields, learning by himself, he would remove all the animals from the field so that he's not secluded with the animal from the field. Or another shot, that he didn't allow a shepherd and the animals to be in one field because he's going to be secluded with the animals. Faces brings that it seems that these Amaram were doing what's called a Chumra Ba'alma. Because we passed like the Rabbana Rabbi Huda later on on the next daf that they said to him, 
Yisrael are not suspect, not for Mishkav Zachav, not for homosexuality, and not for Behim, and not for bestiality. So although we see over here they didn't want to be alone with their dog, their cat, their horse, whatever this and that, because of, 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 of any types of uh, erva, but uh, Taisis Paskins that it's a, it's a, it's a chumrah and that the person could be alone with their dog or their cat or whatever this and that. Now, Rav Sheshis, Mabrele Mitzra, he actually crossed the animals over the bridge that he shouldn't be alone with them um, because of this concern. Rav Chanam and Arda, Iklo Rav Kahan from Nara. He went to Rav Kahana from Pumnara. Chazia the Yosef Kugaris. He saw that he was sitting and he was learning. The key, the cow was there that he would get the daily milk from. It was right next to him. Is mm, sitting outside? Is in this hut? And Amalei said to him, "Blisabel Amar, doesn't the master hold like Shmuel said? I fill him behema, even with an animal. Was just to do a line with 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 the key." Amalei said to him, "Love at I didn't notice. I was in the middle of learning. I didn't." But you're right, like Taisa said, it sounds like these Amarim were machmer, not to be even secluded with the behemoth. Now, Amar Rabbi Rabbi says, another heter of, uh, of, of, of also a well-known heter for the halachs of Yichud, misyachet adem imshte yavamas. A person could be secluded with two yavamas, meaning women that are married to two brothers, they hate each other like two tsaras, like two co-wives. Why? They're worried that maybe one of their husbands will die without any children, and she's in the full fayyib in front of the other one's husband, and then she can become a co-wife. That's how much they hate the competition, That even for that concern. Also, so therefore, you'll have to be secluded with them because they're not going to be mezana with the same man because they hate each other. And so to them, a person can be secluded with two co-wives of the same husband, or isha this is where it gets a little bit more negeya, a, a woman and her mother-in-law also would never be mezana with the same man, so therefore that would be permitted. Or Isha Ubas Bala, or a woman and her stepdaughter. Also, the stepdaughter doesn't really like her stepmom. They all hate each other, as the Gemara says in Yavamas, and Aleph. So, again, if you're together with both of them, you would not suspect that, that either one will be Mazana. And this is the more classic one. Im Isha Tam Bia. What happens is a, a well known head that people use is you could be so good with a woman if there's a girl that knows the taste of beer. In other words, she knows what it means, intimacy. She'll be able to say over, I saw the guy and the girl, that, what they were doing. But, but she would never give herself over to beer because since she's young enough, she's like, Ich, right? She doesn't have the, 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 incline, the desire. So therefore, there's no das kala because she's not going to be easily seduced because she's not into it. So she knows what it is but she's not into it, that's the age where she could be a shemeres, a protector for a guy and a girl that's being secluded. Now the Mishnah said that higdilu, that um, once the boy or the girl gets older, so then zayash meksusa b'chulu, then they, they, the, the mother and the, and the son or the father and the daughter should not be sleeping um, skin to skin. They should be wearing their pajamas, they should be wearing their garments. How old is it for the boy and the girl that's considered matured that it's going to be a problem sleeping with the opposite gender parent? He says, regarding a tineg as a girl, when she's nine years old and a day, and she brought pubic hairs, which is when, like the Pasuk says, as I'm going to quote shortly, when she has her breasts developed and she has her hair sprouting, that's when uh, there's desires that get inflamed for her, which uh, he holds like the one who says that um, when a girl is nine years old and she brought pubic ears already, so then from that point onwards, her development is a sign of maturity. But before that, it's considered what's called a shuma. It's it's considered like a, like a, an anomaly. It's not considered like a, a development of, of of puberty. So at once she's already nine years old. She can't sleep with her father um, without pajamas. Tinik, a, a boy with his mother, is ben shtim mechad, is when he's 12 years old in a day. That's called already that he became older. And then he cannot sleep with his mother anymore, um, skin to skin. Now, Igadam, those that say that, no, tinik is bashtim mechad. A girl is only a problem when she's 12 years old. And tinik, a boy, is only a problem ben shalash when he's 13 years old. But says the Gemara, 
according to both versions, by a girl you need to have, whether it be 9 years old or 12 years old, has to be Kedesh Yihu, like it says the Pasuk in Yechezkel. Shadayim Nechaynu, which we say this by the Haggadah, this Pasuk, that your breasts are, are developed, which are signs of puberty. Uh, there are signs in the breasts, which is like Baichel, as the Mishra teaches in this Nidav, Alf, that it talks about specific stages of development um, in the breasts, and that's the days of puberty. And your hairs are sprouted. So it's just that according to the first version, if those hairs come when she's already nine years old, there's a full fledged sign. According to the second version, no, it's considered an anomaly until she's 12 years old. But according to everyone, you have to have that she's developed. Um, that's the well, related to the well known uh, halacha of the Chazanish versus the Mishnah Brewer regarding what is considered sometimes a problem with uh, erva of a girl when she's developed. When she's developed. And that's, that's what's considered in this context for the parent to sleep with the child, or the daughter, is a similar idea. Amr Raf from Papa Amr of Chizda says, Loi Shon, but we didn't learn this. Elish in the Boy Shalam of Anavar. This all told me only if the daughter is not embarrassed to stand undressed. You, you see your children like that when they're very young, they have no problem changing in front of their father. Um, that's when we said that, okay, it's going to be usher when she's nine or 12. Of a boy, shalom of our, but let's say she's already at his six years old and she's already embarrassed, she covers herself, embarrassed to be undressed in front of a father, then us, then it's already forbidden at that age already. My time, what's the reason? Because the Yitzra Abisha. Obviously, that means to say, which is an interesting psychological phenomena that's being described over here, that uh, that means to say that the desire has already clothed her because you obviously know that she has the taste for intimacy, and that's where the busha comes from. The shame comes from understanding. What this represents, which a little child doesn't have, and therefore it's already forbidden. I think more brings a, a related story that Ravacha Bar Abba Ikel Bey Rav Chizda Chasne. So it comes to the item. Sometimes the old the old Zaydis get invited to the items. So he came to Ravacha Bar Abba came to his his son-in-law Rav Chizda. Shakli Labas Berate. So he took his daughter's daughter. Right, it's his son-in-law that he's by. So it's his daughter's daughter. He took her Isvu Bekanfe, and he put her. It literally means in his wing, but like he took her on his lap. He takes his his einikol, his young uh, granddaughter. So I'm a lay. So the item, you know, sometimes you shver. It's very difficult what to say. So if Chizda says to him, Elisavelamar, doesn't the master hold? Uh, doesn't don't you know from Mikatcha that she's engaged, and and uh, you have to stay away from Aisha's ish. Once you're this kedushin, it's like a married woman. You have to stay away. How can you be touching uh, your your granddaughter? Amalei said to him, What? She's engaged? Avrad Lacha de Rab, you violated Rab's teaching? You're not allowed to get your daughter engaged when she's a minor. Until she becomes older, she says, I want this man. You can't do these, um, these, these pre uh, you know, designated you know, Shaduchim that they, when they. they Mazel Tavala is a chugachab gahata meidel. Oh, yeah, the Hoska Yingo. Okay, Meshadach Zain Shine. Let them make it. Can't do that. You have to wait. Pace has already said that in today's times we can't wait for that, and therefore we do. Uh, we don't do that anymore, but they used to do when it was eight, nine, whatever. Akabama, how could you marry off your, get her engaged when she's a minor? Amalei said to him, I'm not kidding, this most really says. I mean, oh, so, so that's what he said back to him. So, uh, but he said, Mar Nami of Adelayad Shmuel. But he said, like he's getting back at his father-in-law. He says, uh, you tell me I violated Rav's halacha. You violated Shmuel's halacha. Uh, utilize a woman. How are you taking uh, your granddaughter? Amalei said to him, I hold like the other teaching of Shmuel. Shmuel says, Everything's for the sake of heaven. In other words, I didn't have my in mind for the endearment of, of, of marital purposes. It's just because of the endearment of the relationship of my granddaughter. And I just wanted to do, very interesting way Rashi says it, I wanted my daughter, her mother, to be happy that her grandpa is, is hugging her and is, 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 is pleased with her. And says Tysus, it's on this that we rely in today's times that we do utilize women. Not in that way, but back upon them, since it's L'Shem Shemayim, and then, then they wouldn't have this problem about the teaching of Shmuel of Amish Damshim Be'isha. Thank you to any time for hosting us.